This is Pastor Juanita Cook and Deacon Raymond Cook. We're coming to you from the Pentecostal House of Prayer. We're located out here in Madisonville on at 5008 Wetzel. We're located on the corner of Madison and Wetzel. Once again, we want to thank you. So many of you that sent cards and, and you sent letters and you came to visit me and you sent food and you sent flowers and I just want to thank you so much for your prayers. I got calls. We're praying for you. And cards that people I didn't even know let me know that were praying for me. And I want to thank God and you because I still, I praise God. The doctor said I'm doing fine. And I knew that it was him and you that your prayers and his kindness and goodness and mercy unto me. And this week, the song that we've chosen, I thought about, oh, I, I heard, I thought about, you know, we receive trophies. People, right now, the Winter Olympics, Olympics is getting together. And they're going to receive trophies for the gold medal and the silver medal and the bronze medal. And then we have the Summer Olympics, where there are various things that they achieve in sports, they receive trophies for. And we've been singing a song for years about on a hill far away, I'll lay my trophies at his feet. And you know, I heard on the radio in the car, a man was singing this song. And he said, this Roman soldier that thought so much of Jesus happened to look up and see him on the cross and said, who did this? Who put a nail in his hand? Who put those thorns on his head? Who put him on this cross? And while he was so angry, and trying to figure out who did it, he found a hammer in his hand. And you know, he died willingly. He hadn't did anything in your stead and in my stead. Shed his blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet for you and for me. And we find that the song says, hey, my trophies, what are your trophies? Have you fed the hunger? He said, when you do it to the least of my little ones, you've done it unto me. And we want to thank you for the clothes that you send and the toys that you send and the things that you send for us to help somebody else. That's your trophy. Your prayers, whatever you do unto God, that's your trophies. But one day, we'll be able to lay them at his feet. People happen to put certain songs with Easter and certain songs with Christmas and certain songs with Thanksgiving. But we praise our God every day, every moment of every day, all through the year. And the song we chose this time was Jesus on a hill far away, that old rugged cross that you and I have to bear until we lay our trophies at his feet. Cross. 
Praise the Lord. Again, I want to continue to thank you. I can't thank you enough for the cards and the letters and your flowers and your calls and your prayers. And I certainly will be getting you a thank you notice to let you know that I did really appreciate your prayers while I was sick. And the doctor says that everything is going along good. And I thank you for that. I hope you have your Bibles. If you do, we'd like for you to turn to the ninth chapter of the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke. And we're going to be in the ninth chapter starting at the 22nd verse. It states that saying Peter foretells, Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And this is what we were singing about. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Someone else wrote a song, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And we've got to realize that the word of God said, if you reign with me, you're going to have to suffer with me. And our dream should not be the things of this world. People want to get a fine home out in the suburbs. They want to get a fine car. They want a nice bank account and fine clothes so that when they get old, they can sit back and say, so be at ease. But don't you know, in the day that we live, if you live to be 100 years old, you did fine in the day that we live. By the time you get 100 years old, by the chemicals that's in our food, the chemicals that's in the air, you're very, you know, you don't live like the people used to live to be two and 300 years old. Or those that lived to be 100 years old were strong as a man today, maybe about 50. And so therefore, life is so short. Life is so short until we should prepare not for staying here, but prepare for leaving here because eternity is forever. Wherever you choose to live in eternity after dead, death. You know, there used to be a song say, when you're dead, you're done. Old song when I was a little child. They had a man by the name of Louis Jordan and he used to sing, when you're dead, you're done. But honey, when you're dead, you've only just begun. Because we are eternal beings. Christ said, let there be light. Christ spoke and spoke the stars and the world and various things he spoke into existence. He created man. The only the creature that we have of God's creation that he took the time to create in his image was man. He created man in his image. He blew his breath in man. And so therefore the word of God said man became a living soul. So we are the only creatures that will live forever. It just depends where you choose to live. I've said so many times you can choose and you can live in the slums or you can live uh, in, with the rich and famous. So we're planning here where we are going to live. So we find, he says, and he said unto him all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And you see, the thing is, we don't want to suffer. Jesus suffered. And he said, arm yourself likewise to suffer. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to be sick. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to be without. We want to have a plenty of everything. We want to have plenty of clothes, plenty of fine cars, plenty of homes, plenty of money, plenty of everything. And live. we want to be young forever and live fine forever and never suffer for nothing. Don't really truly know what suffering is. But the word of God said, he that will deny himself and come after me and take up his cross daily and follow me, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will find it. Now, it's not talking about you going out here trying to hold up a store because you're hungry and you don't have nothing to eat. And so you go out here and take a gun and try to hold up a store and the man shoots you to keep. And you, well, he shouldn't have died. He was holding up the store for some food. No, God's not talking about that kind of losing your life. 
Because if your ways please him and he walk up right before him, I have told you time and time again, this is your heart. The organ that pumps blood is just an organ, but your heart. That's why you say, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. So when you put God's word in your heart, every time you have a need, the word will come up in your heart. So if you don't have any food, you don't have any clothes, and you're walking up right before God, you sing a song in church, standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior, standing on the promises of God. What are his promises? His promises are, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. You become a seed of God when you become born of God. Every man naturally produces a seed that naturally begets with the female and they produce after their own kind. So in the natural show it should be in the spiritual. We that have God is our spiritual father. Every one of us is baptized in his name and speaks in tongues as the spirit. He gives us the utterance. You can make up a tongue, but only God gives you the spiritual utterance. And so therefore, we find that if God will bless and God being our spiritual father, when you go down in his name, I wish I could give you the Holy Ghost. If I could give you the Holy Ghost, everybody in the world would have it. But since I cannot give you the Holy Ghost, nobody but God can. You know what? It's a good thing. Because if God could give you the Holy Ghost, you know, there'd be only people that, if he was like us, only people that could afford the Holy Ghost would have it. Us poor folks would be left in the cold again. We wouldn't be able to have it because we couldn't afford it. Thought it would be only for a certain sect or a certain group. But praise God, he don't have no respect to persons. All you have to do is repent, and repentance means, Lord, I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. I want to stop, but I just can't help myself. And you know, we find that today, you might be on crack. Maybe you don't want to be on crack, but it's just got you so bound. That you, you, you know, I, I saw a television program, and I saw that it had people so trapped until they just couldn't make it without it. It's kind of like when I was, before I got the Holy Ghost, I used to smoke. And it seemed like if I ate my food, I could, it didn't digest unless I had a cigarette. And if you got the habit bad enough, your flesh would almost make you pick up one off the sidewalk. If you don't have any, don't have any money to buy it. That's how the lust of this flesh can draw you. Now, if it didn't me that bad with a cigarette, I can sympathize, I can empathize with you and the crack or the cocaine. All I'm trying to let you know is there is a better way. If you really want to stop, you can. I want you to know that. I want you to know whatever your habit is, whatever the habit is that you have that you can't help, God can help you to do it. God is able to help you with your crack habit. God is able to help you with the cocaine. You can say, well, no, Sister Cook, you don't know how deep I am in it. I'm in it deep. Don't you know the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord? Don't you know he said, if you walk up right before me and your ways please me, you can ask what you will? And don't you know that if you just say, and repentance is, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to quit, but I just don't know how. I, got, I, I, I don't know how. I, I got the can't help it. And all you have to do is submit. All right. You all take me down in the name of Jesus. That's all you have to do. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I didn't know, Lord. That's about the song we were singing. When I said about the man found the hammer in his hand, Jesus died that you might be saved. And so the only way everyone that Satan can kill, he can walk up and tell, walk, he walks to and fro every day. I've been heaven accusing. And I, I, I got about, I, you think Miss so and so is going to church and singing in the choir and she's serving you? I'll make her do this tonight and I'll make her do that. So therefore, he, you might say, well, I want to quit. And because you really want to quit and you pray and ask God to let you quit, you know somebody come up and offer you some and just give it to you. And you know who that is. So the song we sang was, who put the nails in his hand? Who hung him on the tree? Who caused all that blood? Who, put the, who, put, who had the hammer? 
And every time that you use the crack, every time you use the cocaine, every time you suck at a cigarette, every time you take a drink, every time you commit adultery, fornication, molest a little child, do all these little things, sin. You're putting a nail, you're putting a hammer. You nail another nail in his flesh. And he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You say, I'm not hurting nobody but myself. I'm not hurting nobody else. Jesus died that you might have a right. And you know something? There's no sin. There's no sin that God won't forgive except one. And that one is if you kill yourself, commit suicide because you cannot come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And that's the only one that he cannot forgive because you can't stand up and say, Lord, I'm sorry, and ask forgiveness for it. But every sin that you could commit, that you in your right mind and can say, Lord, please forgive me, and mean it from your heart, he'll forgive you. He'll take you back. He'll take you back when nobody else wants you. He'll take you back when mom don't want you. He'll take you back. He'll take you, you will say, well, I never known him to take me back. He'll take you for the first time. And I'm saying, this song says, to my trophies, at last, I lay down. So you sacrifice. A lot of times, maybe I don't have money, but everything I have belonged to God. I didn't. I went in the bars, spent my last dime, and got up the next morning and didn't have nothing but a headache. I didn't go back to the people, y'all give me my money, you owe me my money back. Went somewhere to try to get it together again. All I'm saying to you, I give you Jesus. I give you Jesus. Try Jesus. We sing a song, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried him? So he says, who will come after me? Let him deny himself. If you come to Jesus and you're rich, give it to the poor. He said, when you've given it to the poor, you've given it to the least of my little ones. I'm so thankful and grateful that we find so many of our athletes, our basketball players during the Thanksgiving, this past Thanksgiving week, and our big churches and the various organizations feeding the hungry, giving to the homeless. But just don't do it on Thanksgiving. Just don't do it on Christmas. Do it all year round. And sometimes do it in secret. And nobody know you've done it but Jesus. I guarantee you he'll reward you openly. You cannot be God-given. There's no way that you can ever say, Lord, I gave more than you. I gave my church tithes, and I gave this lady didn't have a coat, and I fed that little hungry child, and I did this. Have you given your life? He gave his life that you might have a right to live with him and reign with him. And if you think you've got something, you, don't, you haven't seen nothing yet. So he said, ah, you see the song we sing? I got a mansion just over the hilltop. God has a heaven for you and me. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you might be also. What kind of place? Do you know how much an oyster has to suffer to make a pearl? A grain of sand gets into his shell and it makes him uncomfortable. And he, and he begins to spin uh, 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 a serum, and, and a little more gets in. And the more suffering, the bigger the pearl. When the oysters are, we are going to have gates of pearl in heaven. Most of us have 14 karat gold, 12 karat gold, but very, very, very few of us on this earth wears pure gold. But we are going to walk on streets that are purest of gold. Hallelujah. You know how gold has to be made? The fire has to be heated so till it pours like water. God said in his word, buy me pure gold, try it in the fire. So when he makes up his crown jewels, you know what a diamond has to go through? We're his jewels. Some of us are diamonds. Some of us are pearls. Some of us are gold. But what do we have to go through? He said, Jesus suffered in the flesh. Arm yourself likewise. Heaven, streets of gold, gates of pearl. Hallelujah. Oh, it says, eyes haven't seen and neither ears heard what God has in store for us. And you say, well, I don't see why you have to suffer so. 
If God don't bless you, if you're serving him, why you don't have nothing? Remember Lazarus? He didn't have nothing. He didn't have food. He laid at the rich man's gate. He was so sick and so poor till the dogs licked his sores. The rich man, he did fine. All Lazarus wanted was a crumb of bread from the rich man's table. The rich man didn't give it to him. The rich man died. And the Bible said in hell he lifted up his eyes. After he died, Lazarus died. And in hell he lifted his eyes and looked and saw Lazarus. And he said, is it at all possible? Could you send just one drop of water to cool my parching lips? But you know, there was a gulf between him and Lazarus. And he couldn't even get close enough, if he wanted to, to give the rich man a cool drink of water. You know, it's a bad saying. But if you get saved and mama don't get saved, you're going to be able to look at mama in hell and you won't even shed a tear because the word of God said there'll be no tears in heaven. Now is the time. Now is the time. As I stated before when we were singing, there will be people trying to win the gold medal this winter for the ice. There'll be ice skating, uh, all kinds of trophies they want to win. There are people in the movies, their trophies is the Oscar each year that they have. There are people in the world, we give them trophies and gifts. But they are counted all dung and lay them all at Jesus' feet. But God is a spirit. He wants us to get together spiritual trophies. You might say, well, well, I'm the priest. I'm the pope. I'm the head bishop. I'm the this. But if you know somebody that's hungry and you haven't fed them, Jesus is going to ask you when you stand before him, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was homeless, did you do for me? And not that you did it for a big name for everybody to see. You've got to do some things in secret that nobody knows but God and you. And tell the person, don't tell nobody. Don't brag about it. That's when you get a trophy. That's when you get a trophy. A lot of times, oh, I, yes, um, I went downtown and over the, over the Rhine, and every little child I saw, I gave them a dollar. Well, you know, I mean, you got your reward already because everybody's going to pat you on the back. You know, it sure is a good person. They've given this and they've given that. But do your arms in secret. Feed somebody and nobody know it but them and God. Take somebody to the store and buy them some groceries. Help somebody. So it's good people take advantage of you. Whatever. Do it as unto God. Do your arms in secret and I, I, I guarantee you, God will reward you openly. People will have to admit you're blessed because of what you do. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. We didn't get very far, but keep the passage, and we'll go through it next week. Where we left off, we'll come. It's prayer time. Now, whatever your problem is, the Word of God said the prayers, the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous avail much. Whatever it is, let us give it to God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, those that's watching the program, Father, you know their needs, both spiritually and naturally. And, oh, God, because it's written that the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much, we're asking, oh, God, that you supply them right now, spiritually and naturally. And, Father, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that that you've done. We praise your name, oh, God, for that we believe and know you're going to do. Because by faith we're claiming it. It's already done, and we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. Till next week, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. We want to thank J.C. Battle Funeral Home over there on, in Rockdale, on Rockdale in the Avondale area. They're at the funeral home for allowing us to come into your homes each week. And uh, their phone number is on the graphics and uh, also the address. So we want to thank them for allowing us to come. So Till next week, I love you, and so does Jesus. God bless you. Praise the Lord to our TV audience. This is the Apostolic Message, where the pastor is Elder Timothy Richardson, and I am the assistant pastor, Evangelist Diana Richardson. This has been brought to you from the Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Temple Church, number one. We thank the Lord for how we have now accomplished another goal 
and that is Solid Rock number two. Our mailing address is still the same, 1706 Central Parkway. That's in downtown Cincinnati, 45214. Feel free to call us at area code 513-744-9222. Again, this is the Apostolic Message. And the order of our services are Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. And if you're unable to come, send your children. And there are classes there for every age. Our Sunday morning worship starts at 11.30. Sunday evening service starts at 7.30 p.m. Come and have a mighty time in the Lord. And on Tuesday evenings is our dynamic Bible study taught by our own pastor, Elder Timothy Richardson. Come back on Fridays and enjoy a praise and worship, letting go and letting God have his way. Truly, the Lord has been blessing in a mighty way. We thank the Lord for all that he is doing in our life. Amen. Again, we have started another work, Solid Rock number two. By the help of the Lord, God is doing this thing in these latter days. He is pouring out blessings. And we just thank the Lord for how that church is located in Middletown, Ohio. And those that are from the Middletown uh, TV audience that watches our program, come and visit us. Amen. You will enjoy yourself and the Lord. God is truly doing this thing in our lives. And we're so happy right now in our spirit because we don't have our pastor with us. He's absent, but the Lord has blessed us to have a great evangelist with us. Amen. She's been a blessing in revival with us, our second annual women's conference. And truly the Lord has truly blessed our house through this woman of God. That's none other than the great Evangelist Laverne Jones. Praise the Lord, Evangelist. Praise the Lord, Evangelist Richardson. Amen. We're so glad to have her with us on this program. We came to be a blessing once again to our television audience. And we're going to come out of St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. We're going to talk about just a little bit about do you really know him? Stating the point, do you really know Jesus? Do you really know him. Amen. Everybody can say they know the Lord, but it's more than just talk. Everybody can, that's just like the word love. Love is the most, the most uh, uh, word that is just mistreated because we say the word, but do you really mean what you say? And that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson on today. Do you really know the Lord? Coming out of St. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we'll be reading starting at verse 21. So get your Bibles out, TV audience. And let's start at verse 21. And it reads as thus, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Evangelist, you want to talk on that scripture, verse 21. Yes, I would like to make a comment about that. I was just listening to you talk about... Um, do the people really know who God is? You know, sometimes we um, know people in high office and um, we, we know about them, but uh -huh. we don't have a relationship with them and we'll tell someone, oh, I know so-and-so, oh, right. you know, but so-and-so don't really know them. Knowing involves an experience. Oh, yeah. So when we talk about knowing Jesus, we're talking about do you really have an experience with Jesus? Oh, yeah. Are you really familiar with him? What is Jesus like? Or uh, is, is your relationship with him based on what you have heard someone else say? Oh, yeah. Or what you have read? What has oh. Jesus said to you today? When you read his word, have you taken that thing on the inside and have you applied it to your life? You know, knowing someone involves an understanding. It's when you can relax with them. It's when you have more than an acquaintance. It's when you don't feel uncomfortable being in their presence. Right. There are so many Christians that say, I know the Lord, but when it comes down to praying, when it comes down to talking to All him, right. when it comes down to him talking back to them, right. they they really don't have anything to say. They can say one or two memorized uh, uh, verses or one or two memorized uh, sentences, but when it comes to really feeling comfortable with him, just being in his presence and, and sharing their inside, their vulnerability, the part of them that 
They only want those that they feel comfortable with knowing. Can you do that with Jesus? He is so good. He's so yeah. kind. You know, he's so loving and so merciful until when you get down to talk to him, you don't mind letting him know your shortcomings. You know why? Because he knows it already. He knows everything there is to know about you. He knows it already. Even those things that you wouldn't tell him if you didn't know it. If he didn't already know it, you wouldn't tell him. He knows those things too. But he says, take the time. Come spend some time with me. I want you to learn about me. I want you to read my word because my word is going to reveal to you what I think. And I want you to share with me what you think. And I want this to be on a volunteering basis. Not many people know the Lord. They say they know him, yeah, but what they yeah. really have reference to is I've heard about him. Okay. I know about him. I remember the story of what he did. Mm -hmm. I remember the story of what he didn't do. But as far as a relationship, as far as intimacy, as far as sharing my secrets, as far as knowing his secrets, there's a void there. The scripture says, not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the yes. kingdom of heaven. Why? Because Lord means master. Right. And people repeat that word, but they don't always know what that word means. Right. If, if he's your master, then that means okay. he has the rule over you. Yes. That means that you're going to look to him to find out what direction do you want me to go. Not, well, this is what I'm going to do, Lord. So bless me, Jesus. Put your, put your special blessing on what I want to do. But what is it that you want me to do? What direction do you want me to come in? Uh, what direction do you want me to go? What should I say? What should I not say? That is when you get to know the Lord, when you'll feel comfortable in listening to him, listening to his voice, you'll recognize him, you know, because he doesn't always come the same way. That's but right. you'll recognize him when you hear his voice. Why? Because you're familiar with what he thinks. You've read about what he thinks. The word says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, not everyone right. that speak it from their mouth are going to say, uh, you know, they're going to enter into the kingdom, but it's the one that doeth the will, the one that continues to do, the one that knows what my plan is, the one that knows what my choice is. He said, those are the ones that are going to enter into my kingdom. So what you're saying, Evangelist, there are some actions behind what you speak. Yes, yes. You have to actually do it. Yes. It's saying that doeth the will mm -hmm. and what is the will of thy father? The will of thy father is, is what's being revealed in his word. All right. A lot of times people think, Talk. you know, that they have to get down and they have to really ask, you know, God, what is the will? And they go around yes. as if it is some mystery. All right. But God's will is not a mystery. He's revealed it in his word. He has given you his so plan. That's right. He has told you from the beginning to the yes. end what he expects, what yes. he likes, what he's looking for. And so when you get into his word, you will discover what his will is. It's not a mystery. You just have to spend the time and get into his word and learn his will. So and then question. do it. Evangelist, I have a question then. On that note, why is it so difficult for people, us as Christians, to really get to know the Lord in the fullness then, according to what you're saying. It sounds so easy, what you're saying, is that we get into the Word and we, we try to apply that Word to our lives, but why is it so hard? I don't know that it is really hard, Evangelist Richardson. Mm -hmm. I think that we make it hard. Okay. We, 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 we look at it as if it is hard, mm -hmm. but it's all about desire and it's about interest. Do okay. you really want to know the Lord? Yeah. If you want, yeah. you know, people will do whatever they want to do. That's right. They will do whatever it is that they want to do. Uh, if the desire is down on the inside, see, first of all, something has to strike your interest right. and you have to want to. If you want to, then that desire will kick up. And then you will be willing to spend the necessary elements such as time, mm 
Yes. It takes time to get to know a person. You, you can't learn all there is to know about a person by reading a book. And you can't learn all there is to know about a person by what they tell you in oh, one meeting. Right. It takes time, time, you know, for people to reveal themselves because they have to know that you have their best interests in heart. So it's going to take time. It's not that it's so hard. It's whether or not people are willing. First of all, do they have the interest? Uh -huh. Do they have the desire? Yeah. And then it's about they are. are they willing to spend their time? Where are your priorities? You know, because we're doing something with our time. Every last one of us have the same amount of time. That's right. But we use our priorities to do what we want to do with them. Now, if getting to know the Lord is important to us, then we will take the time to spend time with the Lord. And we won't have a, a quick action to when it comes. You know, sometimes when we say our blessing, you know, um, it's a ritual. You know, Lord bless the food. Come on, let's see. You know, but <laughs> when you have a relationship with him, you know, you, you, you have, you, you, we, you talk to him yes. and you, you take your time. Lord you know, bless. Lord, I want you to bless the hands that prepare this right. food. Yes. And Lord, yes. I, I want you to take out any impurities if there should be any. And then I want you to take the energy that we're going to receive from this food. I want you to direct that energy and, and show me how to use it to bring you yes. some glory. See, that's taking time with God. When you take time talking to him, thinking about what you want to say and expressing to him what you really feel, and then you take the time, you know, to listen to him, ponder his word, get in his word and listen. Ask yourself some questions. What does he mean by this? And then put forth some effort. It's not enough just to put in time, you know, just sit there. Well, put in some effort. You know, get into that word, dig, see what it has reference to, you know, put in that effort. And then you have to have a sincere heart, yes. you know. And I think that if we get some elements together, such as time and effort and, and sincerity, you know, I think that we'll get to know God a whole lot better. We'll, we'll become familiar with That's him. That's right. You're so right, Evangelist. And you know, uh, the scripture came to my mind while you was talking in the same chapter, verse 7 and it says, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Mm -hmm. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. So you have to, like you said, the desire, the desire have to be that you have to want to get to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have to want to get to to uh, understand his precepts and his way and, and which is the right way, it's not my way, because we are living in such a selfish time in these latter days that everything is based on me, myself, and I. Right, right. And if we get out of that selfish mentality and ask the Lord, Lord, what is thy will? Because your will may not be my will. Most times it's not our will because our will is so selfish and self-centered and the Lord is trying to get us out of self so that we can benefit someone else. As long as we are stuck on us, we cannot be beneficial to someone else, evangelist. You know, and so it, I like the scripture because it says, ask, and if you really want to know the Lord, you ask the Lord, Lord, I really want to get to know you. Now you got to do something. It says, ask and it shall be given. But sometimes the, the scripture says also that you can ask and ask in a mess. Mm -hmm. You have to, and I like what you said because you use the word desire. You have to really have a desire to want to get to know the Lord. Anybody can call themselves a Christian. Mm -hmm. But if you're not living the way of a Christian, then you're just calling yourself by name. Mm -hmm. It takes a life to live, especially in these latter days. You can't go by talk no more. Mm -hmm. Evangelist talk is out. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It is, is out. Mm -hmm. You have to live this thing now to show who knows who's right now. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many religions, there's so many prophets and prophetess and evangelists and pastors talking the same talk under different labels, call it what you may, under different denominations, but 
It's not under a name and title no more. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's up under the name that you are living. You have to live this thing. You got to show God and yourself that I really want to know your ways, mm -hmm. Lord. You know, there's a song out there say, Lord, I want to know your ways. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. By Fred Hammond. But do you really want to know? That's the question. And I thank God for the evangelist because she made it very clear about the desire have to be there and then act upon. In verse 22, back in verse 22, it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name, asking a question. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. They're making a question now, mm -hmm. evangelist. Mm -hmm. They've done all these things in the name of Jesus, and you mean to tell me I don't know your, I don't know you, Lord. I, I'm not in your will, and I've done all these things. Mm -hmm. Ex expound on that, Lord, and expound on that, please. Thank you. Certainly, um, there is much to be looked at in this verse. Mm -hmm. When it says many yes. uh, will say to me, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name, and in your name we cast out many demons, and we've we've done many works in your name. Yes. Uh, and, and then they get to this point where uh, the father is saying, "I never knew you." Uh, I think what they have to realize here that just because they have a gift, okay. it does not mean that they have a relationship. The Bible here is talking about a relationship. God has gifted each and every one of us. He's given us a measure of faith and a measure of grace. And he's given us a gift that we are to add to or edify the body with. But just because we have this gift, it yes. does not mean that we know God. It doesn't mean that we've experienced God. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, we, we hear so much about God, especially if you grew up in a Christian family, you know, yes. your parents, you know, you, you see them going through and, and uh, they experience different things and they teach you about how good God is and how he can come to your rescue. Yes. And you, we read these stories about about Daniel and the lion's den and the Hebrew boys and the fiery mm -hmm. furnace. And we believe that God is a healer because he healed somebody else. Yes. Or we believe that God is a deliverer because he delivered Daniel. Okay. Or we believe that God can help us, you yes. know, deliver us from a fiery furnace because okay. he delivered the Hebrew boys. But have we experienced that ourselves? Oh, we God. try to yeah, dodge right. our dens and we yeah. try to dodge our furnaces. So therefore, we have not experienced Experience. But you know something? If we would just allow ourselves to experience God, you know, and each and every last one of us get an opportunity. You know what your opportunities are? Many people don't recognize their opportunities because it comes dressed up as work. You understand what I'm saying? It comes disguised. It comes as a trial. It comes as a temptation. And so therefore, when our trials and our temptations come, we don't view it as our opportunity to get a chance to experience the almighty God. You know, we hear that he's able, you know, to provide, but we don't really know that. And as long as we are receiving, you know, we're going to work and we're having a check and, and you know, where other people are giving to us like our parents and so forth. Other people are looking out for us. Yeah. What happens is we have a tendency to feel like this is just the way life is. It is when you get in that place, that valley of experience, yeah, yeah. that valley place when you don't have, yeah. when you can't get, mm -hmm. when you feel so alone, when your resources are not what you would like for them to be and you don't have, it is at that place that when you put your trust in God, yeah. it is at that place that when you begin to, when you make up your mind, okay, Lord, now, you know, the rubber meets the road. Lord, now we're at a place where I need you to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And when we trust him, when we get into his word, when we continue in his will, which is his word, then mm -hmm. God reveals himself. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't talk to other people 
and, and, and let them know what our problem is and then expect for them to solve our problem. Sometimes we know people that have things and we'll share with them, you know, with a mindset of, well, maybe they'll help me. Sometimes God will remove them, you know, away from you. Sometimes God will not allow them to have the heart to help you. And there you feel so misunderstood. But God is saying, I want you to come closer. I want you to trust in me. I don't want you to trust in this individual. I don't want you to look at what they have. I want you to trust in me. I want you to experience me. And once you do that, once you really make yourself vulnerable and trust in God, you know what he does? He comes through. He is so faithful. He comes through. And when he comes through for, for you, do you know that develops knowledge within yourself? That develops something within you in, in which you'll say, I know that my God lives. I know who my Redeemer is. Why? Because I experienced him when I lacked, he came through. And so when we look at the word, and we look at other people's experiences, yes, yes, that's yes. to give you a track record of what God is like. Yes, yes. And you pay attention to his track record because when you come into your valley experience, yes. now you can point back at that and you can say, well, Lord, your word says you have no respect of person. Uh -huh. And I know if you did it for them, I know you can do it for me. Uh -huh. And you can relax. Why? Because you realize that God has your best interest in heart. When you yes. realize that God has your best interest in heart and he's going to bring you through you're going to just have so many experiences with him until you become familiar with him. You know what he's like. And then when you tell your testimony, others can look and they can just appreciate your experience because now that they're looking at you, you're totally different from what they have imagined you to be. Why? Because you're sharing your experiences. You're not just sharing an acquaintance, but you're talking about the int intimacy, how you felt, you know, how lonely you were, how much you didn't have and, and you go through all of the details I encourage people everywhere I go remember the details because you know these this is a part of your testimony in the making that's how you get to that's know God but so many people are going to look at the activities and the things that they have done they're going to look at the good works that they do right. you know and then they're going to say well I know God because he came through and he did this and he did that you know for other people and and he honored his word well yeah. God is going to honor faith no matter where it is that doesn't mean you have a relationship with them that doesn't mean that you feel comfortable when you get in his presence it doesn't mean that you have intimacy that you share secrets getting to know God is when you can let down and you can just be honest with him you can you can open up you can show him your faults you know and, and you can you know show it to him so because you know he's not going to condemn you he's going to clean you up he says if you confess your sins if you confess your faults you know not hide them but open them up to me he says if you do that he says I'm gonna clean you. he says I'm faithful yeah. he says I'm just That's he right. says and I'm gonna forgive you of everything that you need to be forgiven for I'm gonna clean you not the angels I'm not gonna give that job to the angels but I'm gonna clean you up right. <laughs> well you see that she's on a roll <laughs> Amen. Evangelist was talking real good, and it, it brought something to my mind um, when she was speaking, is to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And you know, we have a tendency to label knowing God based on blessings. Yes. If we're being blessed, then we are in the will of God, and we know God. And that has a tendency to be the uh, those that are in good wealth uh, and those that don't have, they feel like, well, I'm not in the will because I don't have mm -hmm. advantages. Can you expound on that really quick? Because we're dealing with a lot of that in these days that we're living in. Those that don't have feel like I'm not in the will of God because I don't have. And those that have, and we have that with uh, uh, different members in our church and a family member say, well, you're giving all that money to your church and your pastor, and how are you in the wheel? Mm -hmm. We have, we're running out of time, but can you just hit on that? And we're going to come back with this next week, but can you just hit on that just yes. quickly for us? Yes. 
too many of us are looking at blessings as material gain. Oh, and, you know, we have a tendency to believe that if we come to God, yeah. that he is going to bless us with a lot of material things. And even though he does, and that's in it, that's not it. All right. You see, God's blessings is his favor. God's blessings is his honor. God's blessings is his grace. And just certain things travel along with that. Right. You know, sometimes we're, we're, we're searching for material things when we should be searching for the blesser. If you get the blesser, the blessings are inevitable. And, and it's not all about the material manifestation. You know, when God gives us our health and our strength, yeah. when God gives us favor, when, when God gives us his mercy, you understand? When we, when we uh, 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 find ourselves guilty of things that we should not be, the price for that thing is to be cut off. But yeah. God says, my mercy endureth forever. Yeah. So it's far better to have the mercy of God, which means that you're not going to get the punishment you deserve. You're not going to get what's coming to you. You're not going to get what's That's fair. Right. You're going to get that which exceeds fairness. That is a blessing. Amen. But too many times we don't look at the those things as being blessings. We look at the material things of being blessed. So let us have a heart for seek the blesser and not the material things. All of these things. He said, if you seek me first, right. all of these things shall be added. Amen. We thank Evangelist Laverne Jones all the way from Chicago, Illinois, for blessing us and giving us great word and understanding and clarity of God's word. Do you really know him? We've came to a close, but we're going to come again um, next week with Evangelist. She'll be with us once again, and we thank you for watching our program. We're thanking you for all the telephone calls, and we're praying for you. And if you have any special prayer requests, just call us, and, and it'll be on the graphics as soon as we get finished praying. Call us, and we will pray for you. You need us to come and visit. We will do that and discuss the Word of God with you. Our intentions are to help somebody as we travel along this way. In a word of prayer, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we're thanking you for this word, Lord, that came so strong on today. Lord, I pray that something been said to help somebody. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you deeply. And we pray that truly this word did something to help somebody to understand more, do you really know him? This has been the apostolic message brought to you from Pastor Richardson and Assistant Pastor. I'm Diana Richardson from the Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Temple Church, number one, where I, we're located at 1706 Central Parkway in downtown Cincinnati, 45214. Again, feel free to call us at 744-9222. Again, this has been the apostolic message. And we pray that something been said to help you. Our order of services, feel free to come and visit us. Sunday school starts Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11.30. Tuesday night is our dynamic Bible study, and Friday night is praise and worship. This has been a Randy Vanderveer production. I pray, hallelujah, for you as you pray for us in Jesus' name. God bless you.